Yeah, so um, I'm head of uh, Trafford's Innovation Intelligence Lab. We're essentially a data lab um, in Trafford. Um, Trafford is here up in the northwest, so that's smudged there. We're one of the 10, um, 10 authorities in Greater Manchester. We're the only conservative authority in Greater Manchester, which is, uh, has opportunities and challenges. Um, so, uh, so this is Trafford. So uh, actually, Anne's already kind of shown this, but this is our this is this is the driver. This is why we do what we're doing. So, what we're trying to do is bring together data to to make sure that people have a better understanding about the area. Now, people generally say Trafford is an affluent borough. Um, you know, lots of kind of you know lots of rich people. And that, whilst that's true of the south, which is the blue, so the blue is the kind of you know less deprived areas. Red is more deprived. Actually, we've got these pockets of deprivation that we really need to be paying attention to. And when we do stuff to Trafford, we cannot do it to, to, to Trafford as a whole because the people in this kind of area, which is your sort of Altrincham, Hale, you know, this is where your Cheshire wives are from, um, <laughs> these, these people have very different needs to the ones over in Partington, which is you know, kind of a rural, isolated area, or up in Old Trafford at the north there, which is you know, pretty much inner city. So that's the driver. That's where we're coming from and why we're, why we're trying to do what we're doing. So what I'm going to take you do now is, uh, is kind of our journey. So we launched in, on the, the, the 3rd of October, we launched the lab. Um, we, we kind of, we, 6 o'clock Friday night, this went live on our corporate website. That was the kind of first that I'd heard of it that we'd launched. Um, this press release went out, went out to every single local newspaper in Trafford, none of whom picked it up, which was a kind of a bit of a surprise when you see the sorts of stories that are in our local press. Um, you know, kind of <laughs> dog eat chips and all those kind of things. But the principal, but you know, we went live and this was it. Now, it, when you'll see, um, Trafford Council leads the way with the launch of a revolutionary new, new digital service. This is what a revolutionary digital service looked like when we launched. So what we knew was, we knew we wanted to be separate from the council because we didn't want to be the man. You know, we wanted to be this kind of separate organisation that people could think, you know, they can go to these people, even though you know the, the council is doing whatever it does. You know, the, there's a there's a separate body who's a little bit you know, agnostic of the council and is able to, you know, respond a little bit differently. So we, we pitched up in our library for a bit, but it didn't work. But we spent a long time thinking about accommodation and trying to get accommodation right, and we still haven't done that. And it's been a year now that we've been, we're not, we're not in there still, we're in, um, like, an open plan office in a housing association now, which does give us that arm's length stuff, but is, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, that's back to the, the, the dark days. So we operated in shadow for about six months before that October with a view to trying to get a bit of an understanding about what we could do. So we, we're, we're sort of three council people, really, um, data. We've got two. We've got, like, a, I'm a strategic data person, kind of whatever that means. I've got an operational data person, and I've also got a JavaScript and HTML developer. And that three, kind of three, this trinity of, of stuff gives us the ability to do stuff with data that, that nobody in our council has ever been able to do before. So being able to use data and understand where to get it from. So as Eric says, there's a whole heap of data out there, open data that's available to us to use. Um, and by giving us a space where we can, we, can, we can do it and make nice things with it, then we're, you know, we're able to, to add a bit of value to it. So this is, this is something that we did with our mayor, um, which was a, a kind of an open data project, really, which he, his charitable arm um, was due to, he wanted to flood traffic with defibrillators. So we said, well, okay, you know, we'll, we'll take a bit of, a, of an evidence-based approach to this. We don't want it to just be a case of him going and raising money, buying a defib, putting it in, and ne next, next. So we, we pulled together a load of data sets and started to think about if we wanted to put defibs in, you know, if we wanted to prioritize them, how could we do that using data? So we came up with, we, we crowdsourced defibs that we already knew about existed, um, we came out with 30. So 30 defibs already in Trafford that we didn't even know about. Um, dropped them on a map and then said, you know, this is, this is the data picture and started to build up data on uh, demographics, physical inactivity, cardiovascular disease rates, all this sort of stuff to start to give us think ideas about where we might want to put our next defibrillator. Every time you raise the thousand pounds, this is, you know, this is the next one that we want to do. And actually, it was the most successful mayoral campaign that there's ever been in terms of cash. Um, normally, they raise between 10 and 15,000 pounds. We actually got, we're now, so we went from 30 defibs all the way up to 100 defibrillators now across Trafford, three of which have been used in you know, kind of life saving situations. Plus, the data that we used, we were able to release off the back of it. So, so we got data from Northwest Ambulance Service um, to, on the number of red ones that they attend, and they, they allowed us to release that data. Um, it also got us in the Guardian. This is amazing from a, from a sort of local government perspective where I'm trying to get internal engagement or well, my sort of colleagues who are all saying, oh, what the hell is this bloody lab? You know, you know kind of who do they think they are essentially is what, what, what happens. 
But if I can sort of, if people start to read it and they say, oh, we saw you in The Guardian, you know, it was, it was really interesting, you know, is there anything that we could do together? So that's been, you know, very, very kind of powerful from our point of view in terms of being able to, being able to get people interested in what we're doing on a local level. Um, in November, we did our first, um, first public health kind of piece. So we, all the time, we're sort of chipping away, doing little bits of projects, just trying to, trying to make things, get them out, and get people interested in what we're doing. This was really interesting. So this, they came to us and said, we've got a project around cervical cancer screening. Cervical cancer screening rates are low in Trafford. We don't know why. We don't know where. All we know is 69% of women that should be being screened are being screened. So we started to pick this up. So we said, you know what? Well, we could do something about this. So we went out to individual GPs. Um, and we said, you know, can you tell us the, the, the screening rates of, you know, of your individual practice so that at least we can get a bit of a sense, rather than looking at a quarter of a million people, can we target what we're doing? So that's what we did. So we came up with this kind of this pocket in the north of the borough there, um, where we've got this, the, you know, like a sort of a cluster of GP practice who, who maybe aren't, um, aren't getting screens as high as they should be. And this allowed public health then to start to think about how they might want to go and start, start to target their approach. So we started to layer up data on you know, various open data sets, demographics type stuff, um, stuff from the census, languages spoken. And what they did was they, they eventually came up with this, um, this strategy, which was a collection of streets where they went and they walked the streets up to women and said, you know, have you been screened for cervical cancer? And they were able to start to gather stories back from the population as to why they weren't being screened. So they were finding out things like, you know, the husband says they don't need to be screened because they're married and they're not promiscuous. So it's really interesting from a public health point of view. This sort of targeting, though, now has... So this was a year ago we started this November. Only recently we started to get the results, and screening rates have gone up by over 10 percentage points across the whole of Trafford. And at least three women have been, have been screened and had stuff identified that they wouldn't have been because they didn't think that they should have been screened. So this is the sort of power of of taking a bit of a, a step back and thinking about data and how data can maybe, maybe drive what we're, what we're doing. Sorry. Um, okay, so May and June, this was our first sort of step out into the community. I was invited, we, we split chapel into four, um, and we have like these different locality boards which are elected members, so the councillors that make the decisions about the area. Community champions, strategic partners, they all, they each, each area had a workshop and they invited me to go and speak to them about data. So this is amazing from, a, from, a, a, from sort of someone that sits behind a desk and does data to be invited out to, to the community to talk to them about what the data says about their area so that they can start to think about setting priorities. So I did this. This is like a 52 slide deck on data. Now it's not as you know, kind of dull as it sounds. We sort of livened it up a little bit. But but you know, being able to be, be, being invited in to talk to these people to say these are the issues that you're facing in your area, not anecdotally, you know, not not just the stuff that, that people are moaning about, but actually, you know, childhood obesity, you know, this is an issue in your area. If you're going to target anything, maybe this is what you want to start to think about doing. And it was brilliant, you know, it's really really good for us to be because it gets us out and about. It gets people thinking about data that traditionally, you know, they, they're, not, they're not that interested in this sort of stuff normally. But they are now, because, you know, and they know that it exists. They know that I exist as a, as a kind of a team who can do this sort of interpretation. Um, maybe point them in the right direction and get them going on, you know, on different projects. So, so this is what we did. You know, we went and we, 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 we had these workshops. And, you know, this is, so this is, um, it's not just good for them, because I'm, you know, we're telling them what's going on. It's good for me, because what it showed, what it, what it allows, it sort of triggered a conversation. This was, um, this was a map that we gave to them in the, in the, course, of the, um, the course of those workshops where in the north of the borough, outcomes are generally very poor. Life expectancy is low, educational attainment's low, benefits claimants are high. But I went to them with this. This is a, this is a thing of, of energy usage. And I said to them, you know, kind of all this bad stuff. And then in the end, I said, but it's not all bad, you know, because people in your area, you don't use as much electricity as everyone else. And I got a right rollicking for it because they all sort of shouted out in one, it's because we can't afford to. And this was a real eye-opener for me, that I'd kind of been going along, analyzing, you know, sort of thinking about data and almost coming up with my own assumptions that actually turned out to be wrong. So that was a real sort of baptism of you know, being in front of a room of people and being told you're wrong by kind of a whole, you know, there's something quite humbling about that. <laughs> Not saying it's good. We also got, um, got a lot of feedback from these people that, that what they really wanted, and this, this started to, to come out then, that they're, you know, they're sort of they're ready for data. You know, they, they want it, they want this kind of stuff. And people traditionally are like, you know, don't, don't get it to the community because they'll never, they won't know what to do with it. 
But actually, they were crying out for this. So we started to build up some, some area profiles for them, where these are, these are modular, dynamic. This is, this is why I've got a kind of a, a developer, you know, JavaScript type, who can build all this modular type stuff that we can drop in different things. So we started to knock these area profiles up for them. And they've got really found useful out of them that we've had elected members who've been going through. And they can get a, get a sense of, of what's going on, what data is saying. But because these are dynamic, so they're API linked to, you know, to data sources or whatever, they're always getting fresh crime data or whatever. So it's, um, you know, this has been really useful for us. And we didn't know that people were crying out for this sort of thing. But this allowed us to target what we were doing. Another thing that came out of, um, out of those things was, um, was this, which was um, the, you know, kind of our most effective data visualization so far. We had a request from one of the elected members. We have a two-tier education system in Trafford, grammar schools and high schools. Grammar schools have, um, have entrance exams. And there's this kind of big thing about, um, about how it's you know, kind of social mobility and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. So, this, so we did this. Now, this probably doesn't mean anything to anybody here, but the basic principle is this is the percentage of children who go to grammar school by ward. These are our deprived wards. These are our affluent wards. And this was the most talked about thing that we did at those locality workshops. So we were like, we need to do something about this. So we made this, which was our first kind of dabble in D3. So we started to think about you know, how we can visualize data to make people use it better. So this is a chord diagram. Um, that we sort of picked, we, we kind of robbed it off, um, off Hebeworks, who did something uh, in Leeds around comics. And then we've just kind of taken it and iterated a little bit. We did something around ledger centers, then something around libraries, both of which were nice, but not, not kind of not game changing. This is really good. So the pink stuff is grammar schools, the green stuff is high schools, and the gray stuff is other schools. But what it allows people to do is start to get in amongst the wards and see who's going where. So this is one of our most deprived wards. Very few pink lines going to grammar schools. Our one of the most affluent wards. Two big pink lines going to the grammar schools. If they don't go to grammar schools, they do one. So they're all going either out of borough or to private schools. Um, and then this, this is people coming from out of borough to our grammar schools. And people started to really kind of get into this. So we sent this out to people because we thought, you know, we need a bit of profile. So we sent it out to head teachers. We sent it to elected members. We sent it to the public. Anybody that was interested or showed an interest in this, this kind of thing, we sent to for them to play with. And loads of things have happened off the back of it. So I got summoned to the secondary heads conference. And they all interrogated me over it and said, you know, why have you done this? And, and how have you done it? But it was, you know, ultimately, it's been sort of a really good exercise for us. Uh, yeah. See where I came, right? OK. So what we also did off the back, because of this hunger for, for data, um, we started off these open data surgeries. So every month now, the first, the first Friday of every month, we, um, we, we kind of sit in a room and say to the voluntary sector, or anybody who wants to come, really, come and have a chat with us about data. We'll tell you how to get it, what to do with it. We'll, we'll make maps for you to drop into applications for grant funding. Um, we aligned it, firstly, with some sort of grant scheme that, we're, that we were running 20,000 pounds for employability for disadvantaged groups. We also started to help people evidence the impact of their projects. So this was an arts group in sale. And we just, because of those ward profiles that we did, because they're so modular, we can just drop in their own data. We've now got their data that we can use to support our own, you know, whatever we're doing. So if we want to say this is the impact of, a, of an arts group in sale, what would happen if we did it in Altrincham? You know, we can start to think about using their data. They get a free profile off the back of it that they can use to promote what they're doing. Uh, you know, everybody wins, really. Um, now, so this is kind of now, with people, people really like what we're doing. So this is, um, this is our joint strategic needs assessment. It's not actually our joint, joint strategic needs assessment. Um, but this is, this is where we're going with it. So people said, you know, we like what you're doing. We like the approach that you're taking to data. It's not a 200-page PDF document. You know, this is sort of a, a bit of a fancy, you know, node and, you know, explore the data that supports our JSNA. There will be kind of boring bits at the back of it. But, you know, this is a, a, it's an element that allows people to play with the play with the, the, the JSNA, which is a really important document about on how we are tackling the health needs of the borough. And there's a whole heap of data at the back of this, but this is kind of a nice, I haven't got time to talk about the whole thing. This, this is, um, we, we got involved in this really, this, so we've got a marathon in Trafford. Um, and people moan about the marathon because every, you know, once a year on a Sunday, we have to shut the roads and people can't get to church, they can't get to the Trafford Center, and every, all the residents moan. And the organizers say, well, it's really good for Trafford because people come from all around the world to Trafford and nobody believed them. So we took their data and we said, OK, well, give it to us and we'll do something with it. So we made a map. And lo and behold, this is true. You know, we've got people coming from all over the world to come and run the Trafford Marathon, apparently because it's one of the flattest marathons in, in Europe. I don't know. So you get people's butt. But this is the, so, so being able to give this back out to people. And also, I mean, we, you know, we, kind of, we put it on a black background because it kind of looks a bit 
that it's like having black sheets on your bed. You know, it sort of sets you out with something a bit different. But the, um, <laughs> but the, the idea is, and our elected members loved it because all of a sudden they've got this, this view of the marathon that isn't just about road closures and you know, inconvenience. It's about putting Trafford on the map and you know, drawing people in. So I think I've, I've got loads more to say, but I think I've probably run out of time. So, yeah, so just some kind of data stuff that we've done. Thanks for listening. Grab Thank you, Jamie, here. for that, that tour de force whirlwind. <laughs> um, I think it'd be, if there's one really quick question, um, oh, other than about Jamie's bedsheets. Um, <laughs> do we have... We've got one, um, just in uh, this lady here. Hi, I'm Samantha Rashton from Landmark. I was just wondering how you got doctors to give you their data. What, how did you do that? Oh, they, they just did it. So because we're, because we're a kind of a, we partner up with the CCG, although, although we'd like more of an involvement with our CCG, um, they, they, they certainly, they, they, know, they recognize that what we're doing is good and has val value. They can see that they want to be involved, but they're not quite sure how to get there yet. So when we want something from the GPs, the CCG get involved and say, you know, yeah, we, we can help this. We can't put an analyst into the lab because that, that's what I would want. But what they can do, they do do for us. So, they, so we, we had a few steps back and forth with the GPs, actually. That's not the whole story. You know, they, we went back to the, those GPs and said, look, can you give us the postcodes of the actual women who you have written to who not attended for cervical cancer screening? So that what we ultimately ended up with, ra rather than kind of a notional, this is, where we'd like, this is where we think we need to go, we actually got the addresses, the, the streets of the women who, who weren't attending. So we could hone it right down to this collection. And because that, you know, we, we didn't then release that. So there's this, there's this constant, you know, and th there's that sort of spectrum, open data spectrum, I think, that, that's this diagram that keeps being shown about. And we sort of, we dance along the whole of the thing. And I never mention open data. I never mention closed data. You know, it's just a case of we're going to do this. Sometimes we'll make it, we'll release it. Sometimes we won't. And GPs, you know, and because we've, I suppose we've developed this sort of trust now um, with different organizations. So, so they knew that, you know, ultimately, I think the CCG got something like 500,000 quid because we got the target went to over 80%. So it's, everybody wins from this. So it was, you know, it was, it was having the CCG involved, I think, is probably the, the key. Thanks very much, Jamie. All right. Thank okay, you. thank you.